And we're back. We're back. We're back to the gear segment that I called Micah's Misadventures. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many. We're going to talk about recovering your drone uh, after water landing or crashing into the water. So some things you should consider and, mm -hmm. and whether it's even possible to recover a drone after something like that. So, right. But before we talk about how to recover it, uh, let's talk a little bit about how not to, how to avoid crashing or water landings to begin with. And okay. There are a few ways. I remember I had a few. Um, so you, did you ever have a water landing? Yeah, water my, landing? mine was oh. unrecoverable, though. Was it? Yeah, it was a saltwater landing. Oh, no. Okay. So what happened? What did you do? Uh, <laughs> so I was taking off. I was flying a Phantom 4 mm -hmm. on a boat on a white surface. Okay. So mistake number one. <laughs> <laughs> and then anyway, it, I took off and the drone was confused as to where it was and it wasn't responding to any control input and the wind blew it right into the side of the boat. Oh, because it, the VPS probably mm -hmm. caught on the boat and as it was moving. The white surface. Oh, oh, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. So the boat kind of like went into the drone as it, yeah. it was as it was hovering there. If I had hand launched, you know, maybe six to eight feet in the air away from yeah. everything, probably would have been fine. Yeah. Oh well, that's that's oh, but that's one of the things to consider. It's the mm -hmm. VPS actually. Yeah. I wouldn't. I you know what? As 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 good as the VPS is, you can even can you even turn it off now on a Phantom? I, I don't think you can anymore. Away. Yeah. But you got to be careful about VPS because what it does, the visual positioning system, that's, mm -hmm. that's what VPS, VPS means. It's a system that, that kind of tells the drone where it is in relation to the ground. It works, I believe, up to 25 feet, 20, 25 feet, 25 something feet, like that. Yeah. And I know some of the units now use it as a visual compass. So just in case the compass gets compromised, it mm -hmm. actually uses the reference on the ground points to keep the drone turned in the right direction. But... What it also does, it's, you know, if you're flying indoors or even outdoors, if you're low enough to the ground, it actually grabs and uses the terrain as a, mm -hmm. as a reference point to, to make sure that it hovers in the spot or, you know, to, to navigate. Which is why they tell you not to do it over an all white or all black floor. Yeah, or over water because or over what that does. And it uses cameras, it uses sonars, so it uses a few, you know, like depending on mm -hmm. what you fly, it's, yep. th there may be a, one of those or, or a different combination of these. But what it does over the water, it gets confused, obviously. If it's a sonar, then it just bounces off the waves mm -hmm. all over the place, and right. it, it just gets distorted. If it's a camera, it's the same thing. I actually had a cases where, where the VPS, when you fly close enough or low enough over water, over river, you know, it will, the drone will actually travel with the water in the mm -hmm. river. And if you're not paying attention, if you're trying to get a shot, or, you know, if you're just hovering, you know, not, not high enough over water, you have to be close enough to the water, you know, 20 yeah. feet or less, usually closer than that. But if you're not careful, I can kind of see how it could grab the drone and kind of drive it into the, you know, drive it into the overhead branch or, you yep. know, something like that. So Yeah, it likes to climb or descend at, at yeah. random sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. So one of the things to to be really careful about, if you have a VPS, the visual positioning system, mm -hmm. and if, you're, if your unit is, is capable of, if you have a control, whether it's on or off, I would recommend shutting it off all water. Definitely. Just using the GPS, especially over moving water. Um if you're if you're launching off the boats, that's another thing. You know, don't forget you, the boat is moving, right? So you know, if the drone just hover, the drone may just hover in a GPS position, but if we get it up in the air, and you know, it can happen that the boat can just drive into the drone. So you're right, you got to be really careful. I remember we had a shoot in, we had a few shoots where we had to hand catch and do all kinds of crazy stuff oh, yeah. in the ocean. My craziest one was Block Island, the Block Island movie, yep. the suspense thriller. <laughs> we we shot with choice there, and and the we're shooting a, a fire. It was like this fisherman boat out between you know Block Island and Connecticut, kind of in the open waters. And oh my god, they were like six, eight foot rollers. Oh and my we literally, god! Mike couldn't even. The boat was. It wasn't that big. It wasn't that small, but it wasn't big enough for for him to like land it. There was nowhere to land, so I literally had to brace my knees in the corner of the boat and as another guy is holding me by the belt it was crazy he's kneeling down holding it's almost me by like the that belt. scene from the titanic movie and i'm like holding <laughs> reaching out with my hands as mike is trying to steer this drone and mike is on the same boat with me so he's mm -hmm. moving in relation of the drone and the waves are moving him too you know while drone is kind of like hovering in there that was the inspire one pro mm -hmm. 
and I literally had to grab it in the in the corners as it's like going up and down. So we had to, oh look, we had to, yeah, we're like looking to the side when is the next wave when we're in a trough, and I'm like now nah, when he like comes down, I grab it and shut down the, the motors. motors at the right time. Yeah, because if you deviate from that catch altitude, yeah, you, the you motors crash, are gonna yeah, respond. He would, yeah, or he would yeah. just you know drive it right into me and all that, and I just grabbed and I had hang on for my life. It would try to fight me because mm-hmm. I'm moving with the boat, right? The drone is trying <laughs> to to stay in the same spot, so it was crazy. Luckily, we managed not to dunk it, but that's what we do now. Now that we have the Inspire 2s, right, well, if we need to do something low to the water and down and dirty, we'll take the One Pro because they have a high mileage on them. And mm-hmm. not that we don't care about dunking them, but, you know, it's yeah. at least you're ruin- not ruining the new new unit. Yeah, I know. But but back to this. So when if you do happen to crash into the water, right, and right. another another thing I, I can see how people would actually get into that situation is uh, running out of batteries. And uh, yeah. either running out of batteries or losing the link and not having the home point set correctly. So right. one of the important things, if you're flying from the shore and you're flying over water, make sure your return to home is set to actually return to home and not to hover, lost link procedure, and right. not to hover or out of land. Especially if you're doing something like, <clears throat> I can, I have a friend that should rename Nameless, but he figured it was a good idea for the first time ever with his Inspire. <laughs> I know this person for the, already. For the first time ever using Li Chi against my against mm-hmm. my advice because I don't let people, you know, I'm not going to like prevent people from doing stuff, but I'll share my opinion if I think that whatever they're doing, you know, pro- may end up in demise of their machine. Mm-hmm. And he thought it was a good idea to try the Li Chi for the first time over the river at, uh, night. at night. Yeah. Doing a, a time lapse, right? And somehow, don't ask me how, uh, the return to home point or the home point was set in the water and he lost connection. Oh. <laughs> so we're able to reestablish it. By the time that happened, it actually went into outer land. So now the thing is on the other side of the river. It's trying to land somewhere in the river. Why was it in outer land? Because it was trying to return to home because or was now, it low battery? Because it kept trying to, well, it wasn't. It was trying to return to home, mm-hmm. but the home was in the river, right? Got it. So okay. in a, you can cancel if the Inspire goes into return to home. You can just flip the the, the switch it the, over the to switch attitude, switch add, a mode. attitude and yeah. then back to the to the GPS, and that buys you some time. That kind of resets it for like you know ten seconds mm-hmm. or whatever. But in the middle of us trying to like reset it and reestablish, restart the DJI Go app, reestablish the connection, uh-huh. it went into auto land because of the low battery, right? So I had to like run up this river back and he, he, and he <laughs> hands me over the controller, right? I don't know what to do. I'm like, oh, great. Now this thing is going to go in a river with, you know, like me holding the controller. Mm-hmm. So I ran up the embankment and I held up the throttle long enough for me to be actually able to spot the drone against the sky, you know, and uh, oh my God, it was nuts. And we brought it back, but it was close. So set your home point. If you're going to experiment with apps like, you know, Lichi mm-hmm. and all that, it's a great app. But don't do it over water. Don't don't take that risk if that's something you're doing for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, we should at, answer the actual question though too. Yeah. How do you recover a drone after a water landing? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to to crash a drone in the water is to set your home point on a boat. Yeah. Well, and you have dynamic home points. You can do okay. So make sure the dynamic home point is set mm-hmm. up. Or, or the or the home point is the controller itself. So or the home point is the controller itself. Or if you don't have, if you have some of the older models and it only gives you return to home and hover, mm-hmm. I'd rather do hover. Yeah. Because at least I know if the drone you loses drive the, the boat link, underneath it you and can, catch it. it will hover until it runs out of batteries, so you have a good chance of recovering it. Only do that if you have a boat. <laughs> On, yeah. 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 So boat landings, do a dynamic home point or have it follow, make sure it returns to the controller or if you don't have that capability, actually have it to hover. So, but if somehow you still manage to do water landing, um, what what is a good idea to go through and can you trust the machine after that? I think you can in some respects. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it 100%. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, I wouldn't fly like over something important. I would probably keep it as a backup. Yeah. Or just can you just eBay it? No, don't eBay it. No. Well, that's a that's but, a good segue into the next topic. I know, but what what are some of the considerations? So you you had a crash into the salt water, right? So mm-hmm. it's it's considering that you can actually recover the drone. 
What's the good first thing to do? Remove the battery. Remove the battery, them. ASAP. Yeah. What, what happened with mine in particular, mm -hmm. that battery was compromised immediately because it's saltwater solution. Yeah. So whatever that does to the battery, it started to expand on the inside and then leak battery acid into the drone body itself. Whoa. Okay, so that's not And down idea. my leg and on my hand. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So remove the battery and mm -hmm. keep it somewhere where, you know, it, it's, it could be flammable, it could be volatile. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on in there. I don't know. I, I wouldn't recommend tossing it in the water, but no. you know, I not good for the environment at it's all. It's not. But if you have a choice between having it on your boat, yeah, oh yeah, ocean for sure. <laughs> I, I I don't know. It's and once you get to the shore, actually, which is the funny part, they recommend to diffuse the battery or leave, salt leave it in a bucket of salt water. So you know, as soon as you can get it into one, or if you have a bucket on a boat or mm -hmm. like a topperware container, you know, whatever. Leave it, leave it in mm -hmm. there. Leave it away from stuff that should that should discharge the battery. But I would I would say yeah. be careful about that one. If it's salt uh, water, though, yeah, the, I think the next step yeah. is to rinse that drone without a battery in it yeah. in uh, fresh water. Fresh water. If you have the tools to take apart the drone as much as you can, you yeah. have that much more. Yeah. Uh, of a fighting chance of recovering it. Yeah, I didn't know how to take apart a drone at all when mine okay. went into the water. So how would you rinse it? Just in a sink and use one of those sprayers in a sink or a shower? Or? I don't know if I'd use a sprayer. I would just the, submerge the whole thing in like a large vat of fresh water. That um, way I'm not, you know, damaging any oh. delicate wires that might be in there. Gotcha. So if you're at a hotel and they have like a fountain there or a fish yeah. tank or yeah. you can go to like a Chinese <laughs> restaurant and use one of their goldfish uh, things, whatever, improvise, improvise. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. get that salt off there because yeah. you know if it if it gets if it gets through the electronic if it's allowed to dry up it's gonna it's corrosive and it's just not gonna Done. do that well so the, uh, get it through some fresh water if you happen to to crash it in the salt water okay what's next what about the rice trick the ri I don't know Does much about the rice trick I thought that was more of a cell phone thing it worked for a couple of friends of mine actually yeah. I told them yeah yeah and they were able to recover their drones and I'm not gonna again not I'm not gonna be dropping the names of people mm -hmm. <laughs> but in in this context. But um, I, if you take a topperware container, something big enough, or you know that fits the drone, that you can actually seal it in and take you know a, a kilo of rice or whatever. You don't have to completely submerge it. The idea is that the rice actually gets the gets the the, the humidity, mm -hmm. you know, and soaks it all up. So it really dries it out from everything, and it it worked actually. I I've known of some people, of a few people that were able to recover. One friend in particular who were able to recover a drone after two water landings. That is very lucky. Did they play but the lottery? It was a, yeah. <laughs> no, but they're sure staying away from bridges. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the point is that that this person was able to literally by taking it. This was a fresh water. There was some other damage to the shell that he had to deal with, but you know, the rest of it was really drying it up fast enough. And I think he had to replace a ribbon or something in one of the mm -hmm. cases. So. Minimal damage if you can get to it fast enough. I would not probably recommend flying that machine anywhere where it's important anymore. Leave it as your backup yeah. after that. Or I wouldn't probably sell it on eBay or something. That's not nice to do. But um, that's about it. That's how to recover, how not to crash mm -hmm. a drone in the water and how to recover it if in case you do have a water landing. All right. Well, for this segment and all of the other ones, again, head over to dronephotographypodcast.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If this helped you any, uh, we would really appreciate it. And we will be right back after this.